Hello, Farouk here. This is the fourth and final video in a series on developing JavaScript Azure functions. In this video, we will modify the HTTP trigger demonstrated in part three. The HTTP request body will contain a user info object as shown in the diagram. The function will write the contents of the request to a file in Azure Blob Storage. The name of the file will be composed from the value of the ID contained in the user info object. And just because we can, the function will append the current UTC daytime to the file name. We will be relying on function bindings to do the heavy lifting, which we covered in part three. It doesn't take much JavaScript code to accomplish this. For this example to work, we need to set up our local development environment with a couple more tools. The first of which is the Azure Storage Emulator. I use the emulator so I don't have to incur costs by using a real Azure storage account. This example will also work if you don't have an Azure account to work with, as the storage emulator does not require one. To install the Azure storage emulator, go to this website on azure.microsoft.com, scroll down to the Azure storage emulator section, and click Install. After installing it, you need to run the Azure storage emulator executable in order to start it up. I also recommend downloading and installing the Azure Storage Explorer so that you can easily see the files as they're being written to Azure Blob Storage. To install Azure Storage Explorer, go to this website on azure.microsoft.com and click the Download Storage Explorer free button and install it with all the default options. Now you have your development environment set up. Let's look at the function code. Here I have function.json open. I made some modifications to this file from part three. The first of which is I removed the HTTP output binding and replaced it with a blob output binding, which begins on line 13. I don't have this JSON memorized, but fortunately, this is well documented on MSDN. If you go to this website on docs.microsoft.com and click supported bindings, you see a list of all the supported bindings. So click on blob storage and then scroll down to output example and then click JavaScript. And there you have it, the object attributes that are required in order to set up your output binding. This is a very handy reference. So be sure to bookmark this if you are going to be doing a lot of function development in JavaScript. All right, back to function.json. Let's go over the output binding parameters. The value of the name attribute is how the output binding will be referred to in JavaScript code. The type should be blob. The connection is the connection string to the Azure storage account. Here, it is set to use the emulator. And we go to local settings.json, and there we see the storage connection string variably being set to use development storage equals true, which is what you use if you need to use the emulator. Now let's talk about the path attribute. Earlier, we said that the file name will be the user info.id followed by the datetime.txt. And this is exactly what this path syntax is going to do for us. Saved requests is the name of the blob container. If the blob container does not exist, it'll be created when the function runs. And this is followed by the file name. And it's just a matter of specifying the path of the JSON values that we want to bind to, user info.id, and then a hyphen. And then this datetime is a built-in Azure functions binding. So it is going to insert the current UTC datetime followed by dot txt. Now let's take a look at the JavaScript code. And I've modified this from the HTTP trigger example in the previous video. Line four shows you how to assign an input to an output. Here, the incoming request, which is given by context.bindings.req, 
is going to be assigned to the output blob, which is referenced by context.bindings.outputblob. This means that the contents of the file will be the entire HTTP request serialized as JSON. So let's start the function. Before we do that, we need to run func extensions install in the terminal window. By default, only HTTP and timer bindings are recognized. Func extensions install installs the other bindings. This only needs to be run the first time you run a function with a binding other than HTTP or timer. Now let's run func host start. And the function is running. Now I'll create a post request to the function using postman. Okay, here I have postman and the request window opened up. I am going to create a post request to the function's HTTP URL. And the important part here is the body. And I, you can see here that it has a user info object, which has an ID attribute. And so the name of our file is going to be user12345 hyphen the current daytime dot text. So I'll send this request. And we get a 204, which is expected. Now let's go to Azure Storage Explorer and see if we have a file there. And here I have Azure Storage Explorer open, and I can see that there is indeed a save request container that was created for us. And there's our file, user12345 hyphen the UTC datetime.txt. So far, so good. So let's open this file up, and we should see the entire HTTP request serialized as JSON. And yes, we do. Great. Now let's go back to the JavaScript. And all that was done with one line of JavaScript code. And I think that is amazing. I've placed links to the various tools and documentations covered in all the videos in the series in the video description below. I hope you enjoy watching these videos and have learned something more about developing JavaScript Azure functions and will go off on your own and develop your own. Thanks for watching.